Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Greetings and welcome to episode 267 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Alvin. My name is Barbara. What's happening, Barb? How are you down in sunny Florida? I think I just filled you in. This was absolutely the worst week of my career, and I've never said that and never will again. But every day was just like some sort of just really dramatic bullshit. So today's Friday. I'm going to make it a great day. It's Cinco de Mayo. I know this gets released on Monday, but we do the intro on Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah. I'm just looking forward to traveling next week and hanging out with uh, Miss Heather and you and doing our voices from the bench from Iva Clark. So I'm going to put my brain to next Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry you're having such a terrible week. Yeah, thanks. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How was your birthday? It's great to be uh, 15. Good. I'm only 30. So Yeah, yeah. You're still younger than me, though. <laughs> birthday was good. Good. Yeah, I'm at that age where it's just a day. Yeah, but you got to be feeling a lot of love from everybody that reaches out to you and all the fan pages and stuff. It's really I do appreciate that, and and the memes Joe make seem to creep back into oh, life. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Joe. <laughs> but yeah, you mentioned heading out west. Uh, Lab Day West is this weekend, Yay. so. Super excited. I've never been. I know you've been, but I've never been, and I'm really excited. It's cool, laid back, smaller, and just a great vibe. Cool. The weather here in Indiana is starting to get nice, so it makes sense that I finally leave to go somewhere <laughs> else. But yeah, we're going to be with our good friends in the Ivaclar room. Can't say enough about them, how great they are, and how great they treat us. Yes. But if you are going to Lab Day West, make sure you stop by. Say hi, or, you know, honestly, what we really want is for you to it's sit down with weird. us and record. Tell us your story. Do we have cool swag again? Uh, we do not. Not that I'm aware of, yeah. unless they surprise us. We'll have stickers. All right, always stickers always with the stickers, yeah. We're going to be there May 12th to the 13th, of course, in sunny Garden Grove, California. And, of course, we are so excited to see so many friends and hopefully make some new ones. Actually, new ones because we'll be out west, and I don't think we've ever taken the podcast that far out west. So we haven't. It's going to be really great to be able to talk to people that we may not see at LMT Chicago. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. This is the farthest we've ever taken the podcast. Thank you. Iva Clark. Thank so. you. Iva Clark. All right. So we do this every year. You guys, some years are better than others. And Elvis is always like ragging on everybody, but you I'm begging. Know. Let's be honest. Yeah. I beg. I know. <laughs> that it seems that either we get a ton or we get none. But we're going to once again celebrate CDT and Dental Technician Appreciation Month. So every episode in June, so we're a little early because we need to get our shit together. Every episode in June, we will play audio that you guys can send us thanking that special someone, that group, that vendor, that person, whomever. You can sit, record yourself on pretty much any phone or computer and then email it to us at, and write this down info at voicesfromthebench.com or send it to us on any social media messenger service. Or if you guys are still an analog technician, which I think it's great, you can record yourself on a cassette tape and mail it to us. (laughs) Just kidding. Seriously, send us your thanks and let's make this the best CDT and dental technician appreciation month ever on the podcast. But speaking of Lab Day, this week we're going to step into the Wayback Machine and go back to another Lab Day, Chicago. Yay! That's right. The conversations we got while at the Iva Clark Ballroom just keep coming. And this episode has two great guests. First up is Chet Spivey, who's the Senior Vice President of Sales at Iva Clark. Chet is another that's been with Iva Clark for a long time. 25 years. Excellent. He loves it so much, this dude left Southern California to live in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> and if you ask Heather, like, why would you do that? But, yeah. <laughs> I think if you ask anybody in Buffalo, you ask, <laughs> why? 
Chad talks about some of the past product he used to market to some of the exciting new things Ivoclar has out, like their new scanner or new ways to bleach. What's super exciting, I get even closer to finding out the history behind the Emacs lips. She's coming on, man. You got to find her. You know what? She's in California. We'll talk to her next week. Yeah, well, we're going to find her. <laughs> that has to happen. And then we had the extreme pleasure to talk to the Canadian rock star denturist, Esther Schwenning. Yes. Esther comes from a big family of denturism. And she pretty much started in her family's practice in the fifth grade. Sounds like me. Yeah, get them young. No yep. labor laws in Canada. <laughs> yep. She talks about her path, her amazing practice way, way, way up north, her quest for the perfect denture, her growth with digital, and of course, making beer. Making beer. It's a yes. great recording that took us way too long to get. So join us as we chat with Chet Spivey and Esther Schwenning. Are you attending the LMT Lab Day West Show in Garden Grove, California? You gotta join Ivoclar as they continue to celebrate their 100 year anniversary in the dental industry. At Lab Day West, you can get up close and personal with Ivoclar's digital technology materials in an epic speaker lineup. Learn firsthand from many of the industry's leading dental professionals as they share their tips and tricks for success. Come and hear Raphael Santrick, Jed Archibald, Steve Hatch, and experience the hands-on courses from Janelle Tabakovich and Pat Kuhn. For a full listing of speakers, simply visit lmtmag.com and register today. Also, we have to have a shout out to the podcast, Come see Elvis and I, Voices from the Bench, as this will be our home from May 12th to the May 13th. That's right. We're heading out west. Come by to say hi, be on the podcast, tell us what inspires you, or heck, just give Iva Clark a happy 100-year message. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Iva Clark. Hey, it's Candular from Switzerland. We have been designing teeth since 1936. Successful tooth design knows only one benchmark, your own standards and those of your patients. Discover our tooth line PhysioSet TCR with new 18 anterior molds, manufactured specially for the U.S. market and your daily work at your bench. If you are looking for new options in removable, get to know us at candular.com and find out more. You will be supported and supplied by our authorized dealer, Edmunds Dental Supply. Candular. High-end only. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. A lot of people like to go Ted Niner, Niner, Fiverr. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 see? It's more fun. Right, I, right. I think my voice sounds sexier. In this thing. <laughs> He's not... All right. Chet Spivy? Chet Spivy. Spivy. Yes. You know he's going to say it wrong. <clears throat> yeah, so I do every right time. Okay. All right, Barb, you go. You oh, wanted to say it. Let's no, do the you introduction. Do it. You're always doing the introductions. <laughs> so All here right. we are at the Iva Clark Grand Ballroom on, what is it, Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. Last day of Lab Day. So we're, excited. We're joined by Jet Spivy. Chet Spivey, yes. Chet yeah. Spivey. Chet How are you, Spivey. sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. All right. So the great Laura brought you over. Right. Yes. The great Laura Gilbert. Yeah. Right. right. She's amazing. She is. So Chet, she brings Chet and I have known each other many, 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 many years. years. Yeah. Well, what's Just the history so you know. here? Iva Clar. Yeah. You know, I'm an uh, Emacs lover. It's yeah. Everybody knows I love Iva Clar. Yeah. That's a no-brainer. So he and I have been... Right. Yep. Many, many meetings. You know, they used to have us up to Buffalo. I came down to your lab. Yep. Oh. Yeah, down to our lab. Yep. Yeah, so. So what do you prefer, Buffalo or Florida? Gee. Oh, wow. I think that's you not, live there, don't you? A, that's a difficult <laughs> question. Do you live in it? Buffalo? I do, but oh, okay. I'm not from Buffalo, actually. You're from Buffalo. I'm not from no. Oh, you're not from. Where no, are you from? I'm originally from Southern California, Ventura oh. County, actually. Look wow. at him. Come yeah. on. Does yeah. he, he just screams California. So how did you end up out of California, which has a ton of dental companies, in Buffalo, where right, we're driving. Right, right. No, that's a great question. So I started in the dental industry as a sales rep out in Southern California. Okay, sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I was a sales rep for about seven years. And then uh, I was recruited by uh, Bill, Dr. Bill Dickerson, 
to, to oh, come to LVI. The great Bill Dickerson. The great Bill That's Dickerson. Awesome. And yeah. so he he hired me to be his uh, director of marketing, and Ivo Clark was a big sponsor, and actually still is a big sponsor oh, yeah. of, of LVI. And what is that? Uh, what is LVI? Las Vegas Institute. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. right. So. Yep. So I, I was uh, I was recruited by uh, by one of the sponsors actually, sure. and yeah. so I uh, I made the decision to go out and work for Ivaclar for a couple years. I thought you know because I couple. grew up in Ventura County, I was a, a beach yeah a beach guy, and now I was going to the snow, so I had to learn a lot. So did you move to Buffalo? I did. Right I moved away. to Buffalo, and I I thought I'd be there for about two years to be honest. Really? Yep. Give it a shot, see what it's like. Exactly. And, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Find out what these seasons are all about. Those types <laughs> of things, right? Right. Yeah, because we don't have them we in California, ha- we, and Florida. <laughs> no, no, no. Lo and behold, I met a beautiful girl who became my wife, oh. and she's a Buffalo girl. Yep. So my two years turned into this year will be twenty five years 25 in Buffalo. Years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty five wow. years in Buffalo. And you've been with Ivy Clara since all twenty five. Yep. Really. Yep. Yeah. So tell us the story. So you started there, and then so tell I started us about there. Your they actually brought me on as a uh, marketing manager. Okay. So I went from sales into marketing, and I was given. I kind of grew up on the on the clinical side of the business, right? So they gave me the direct restorative portfolio, which was great, and I got to travel back and forth to Liechtenstein and and, oh. uh, and participate in some product development. And, How do you and market cement? Yeah, I mean, what other? I, that's the biggest clinical that I I, I know of because I'm all lab, right? But I, I, th- I think that's what that's what makes Ivo Clark really unique, you know, because we're a lab company and a dentist company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and and dentists really trust their lab technicians, right? And so your lab technicians can make recommendations. So yep. we actually would market it through the lab a lot of times. I mean, of course, we advertised in the dental journals. Sure, sure. But by educating laboratory technicians on cementation, because they get the calls, right? Oh, you educated all the time. me, I, for sure. Right, right. Yep. And so, you know, educating someone like, you're right, right. So, like Barb, and then they call. And, and then and I the, can walk them through she, it, and I can right. recommend she it, and I can tell them this is how you do it. <laughs> and they need that. They do. Because they're they a little clueless. Well, they call sometimes. the labs <laughs> first for everything. Yeah, they exactly. Do. <laughs> they and do. you recommend it. So, what's the best? Right. And I, yeah. I, I, you know, and then when you're trained on it, you're recommending Ivoclar products and cements, and and then you got to walk them through how to do it. And yeah, I totally agree. And, and actually, at that time, that was when we were really starting. That was the Empress days, right? The aesthetic oh, yeah, revolution sure. and all that. And we were bonding was becoming more and more important. And that yeah. was that was something that you know it took some time to learn all of that stuff, mm-hmm. right? So excuse my ignorance, but was anybody bonding before Empress? I think there were. Well, Maybe re- direct resin. Do you yeah. bond direct resin? Yeah, you bond direct okay. resin. But yeah, um, yeah when we See? launched uh, the rest, yeah. yeah, look at you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> See, I totally Here, you was guessing. Job. You can take the clinical job. But now. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. You didn't. I never heard of bonding until you bring up. Yeah, that's right. true. You know, Evax or Empress or right. anything like that. Yeah, that's what. So that Verilink was the. Yep. Yeah. At the time was the and still is obviously one of our flagship cements, but um, that really put bonding on the map for yeah. Empress and things. What yeah. other clinical stuff does Ivoclar do? Well, there you, we were talking about the bleaching The yesterday. bleaching right. yesterday. Right. Yeah, like yeah. We're launching, uh, We're actually this year we're launching, this past year we launched a whole new whitening portfolio okay, yep. called Viva Style. Yep. Uh, Style. It's, it's much more Style. robust than it was in the past, so it's not only the in-office, but there's a lot of uh, take-home you know, lip yeah. strips and the little whitening pen and things like that, yeah. as well as the in-office whitening. But so. impression material, does I have a car do all Yeah, that so back in, I think I think it was around 2003 was when we got into the impression market with, really? b- with a, a virtual. But now we're really yeah. we're really focused on digital oh, now. Oh, of course. So yeah. now yeah. we're yeah. focused on I've iOS. actually used yeah. your scanner. The lab I'm at has one. Oh, really? It's actually okay, great. really good. Yeah, Viva Scan. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. So I didn't know you had a scanner. Really? I think it's a right over. <laughs> Where is it? I want to see. Right here. Okay. Yep. I could probably yeah, reach it with right my cord. right in front of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Art. No, so we, we actually, it's only been on the market. We just launched it last, at the end of, okay. at the end of 21. So, okay. so we just had our first, finished our first full year yeah. with the scanner. So. And how's that going? It's going I really mean, well. It's going yeah. really well. We'll be launching some uh, upgraded technology later in the year. So upgrade to the scanner, uh, just or? software upgrades, yeah, you sure. know, making, you know, a little more AI and, and, and more detail and things yeah. like that. Right. And that's faster. You getting labs getting those things, you or? know, 
actually a lot of labs are interested in them. They're actually interested in purchasing them because they want to get their clientele into scanning. So yes, that makes sense. Um, there's a there's a trend where you know as long as you're prescribing a let's say a minimal amount to the lab, a lot of labs are buying the scanners and, and just giving them. Are to you their still seeing accounts. that trend? Yeah, yeah, we are. We are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd love to be able to do that. Right. I mean, that just sounds it's it's a no brainer if you right. ask me. So you've been with Ivacar 25 of their 100 years. Is this like the best ever? <laughs> that sounds quarter of their crazy. <laughs> quarter of a century, yeah. No, it's, and I, I have been with them a lot. In fact, we did a press conference last night, and uh, they were showing historical, you know, like a lot of products from way back when, and I actually recognized a oh. lot of the old packaging. Yes. So, yeah, that was a little surreal there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've actually, I was thinking about that this morning. I thought, you know, I really have seen a lot of, uh, innovation and and just Ivaclar growing into so such a such an amazing company. I mean, it was an amazing company when I started with sure. them, but uh, we've grown so much over the last my twenty five years for sure. Were you in charge of marketing during the Emacs launch? You know, I was. Yep. Okay. So actually, so when I go. oh here we go. Oh, okay. I'm trying I know what he's gonna to ask. Here find okay. out who did the Emacs lips. He wants was to know who you? the person is. No, I want to know who did it, and oh. then I want to know who the person is. Well, I want. I know. He wants I'm those assuming. Lips. On, you you, no, I want you on know who point. it is, right? I know who it is. You don't know. So, I might be thinking of a different video. I know that uh, you're talking about the ad. Yeah, yeah the, the yeah. one that you got the stickers from that everybody yeah. put on all oh. their invoices. Right. I, I don't. I'm not sure who the person is, okay. but I believe I believe Lee Culp was. You're the second the one to kind of mention right? that, but they're never yeah. confident. So. Right. I, I believe I believe it was Lee Culp. Really? Yeah, that, did, that, the that did the work. He's it's not nice Lee Culp's guy. lips, oh. though. But uh. <laughs> So he's the one that made the veneers. Yes, yes. Okay. Did he huh. take the photo, or did that come no. to Ivoclar? No, no, that you? would be Ivoclar, yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. And you don't know who it is. And so that was a fun campaign because it. Oh, yeah. it blew when up. we started, the lips were the first phase of the ads. The lips were closed, right? You couldn't see teeth, and then really, and then the pa- in the next phase, the patient turned, and then the oh, third phase that. when we actually launched, the lips were open and you could see the teeth. So you so like it was kind of a teaser it? campaign. Oh, it was I really had no ex- idea. Yeah, we used to do a lot of teaser campaigns yeah. back then. Right, it's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. I remember when Prime came out, there was a bunch of teasers. Sure, yeah, we yeah a we lot launched it in this room, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sure we it. did. Yeah, you know, we yeah. I think we've been in this room. Ever since I've been with Ivan, really, Clark. yeah, yeah, spent a lot of time. Well, in here. once we moved over from, the, we used to be at a different hotel, and then LMT That's moved true, over yeah. here, yeah. and we've we've been in this room for a long time. So long that you get mail. We kind of own. <laughs> it's a great the AV spot, ballroom, though, right? You don't have to walk five miles to get there. You just like turn right. the corner, and you're right here. You here. are, yeah, and you're right across the registration desk. It's a perfect spot. It is. So, it what is. else do you have planned for the day? So, you're launching. Are you launching anything? I think we asked. Um, Somebody yesterday, and that was more about people. Like this year is more about your customers. Right, and it's all about our customers. Yep, I yep. love that. It's about our it's about our customers, about our people. Uh, you know, our own our own team, and it's also our business partners as well. Yeah. So we're really folk. That's really our primary focus, right, at the moment. Yeah, I love that. Yep. But no new equipment this year. Maybe uh-huh. IDS, maybe I don't know. No, not this year. We, we it's a little light this it's year. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll be launching. Well, you've got something your every anniversary. Year. It's well, hundred years. Yeah. What the, you don't need to launch something when right. you're celebrating hundred years. <laughs> right. I mean, we'll have we'll have some more materials that we'll be launching later in the year. You know, things yeah. that'll be anything yeah, we can bit, talk about. A little bit more exciting. We'll be expanding our you know more in our zirconia portfolio. That's okay. really that's really the the buzz right now sure. is, is zirconia. Right. We're seeing obviously a, a huge shift towards zirconia. Yeah. Heck yeah, we are. Are you doing anything with the Emacs um, MTs? I know that I cannot do a C. I think it's a C1 or a C2. I always have to use LT, and it makes me crazy. Are they making an MT? Um, I could I'm, be wrong. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about so. the MT. No, I think we're, we're going to focus a little more on the chair side as well. Really? Uh, on the zirconia. Okay. Yeah, so there'll be some exciting things coming out at the end of the year. So for chair side? For centering. chair side, uh, CAD cam and yeah. things like that. So we'll be taking... Some of our technology that we have on the lab side, and we'll be bringing that over to chair side a little bit. Well, Chet, thank you so much. Oh, yes. thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Oh, what a, a pleasure. Thank Good you. Luck. Good Great to, to see, you. see you again. again. Yep. Awesome. All right. All thank right. you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks. All right. Take Bye. care. How are you? <laughs> I love this already. Oh, I'm a fan. I've got them all over my oven. <laughs> yeah. I have a laptop. And my <laughs> Same here. My laptop, my oven. Mm-hmm. 
So we are at the Ivo Clark Grand Ballroom celebrating their 100 years at LMT Lab Days Chicago 2023. Got that out of the way. Are you going to say that every time? No. Okay. No. I was just, he's going to say it all day today and then stop tomorrow. Yeah. I'm already <laughs> kind of sick of saying it. Like, like a tongue twister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we finally have Esther Schwenning on. Hello. Esther Hello. Schwenning. Okay. So I just, love that name, by the way. Just a backstory. During COVID, the Denturis Association, is it the N NDA, uh, National the Denturis, Denturis Association. Association, they did their meeting virtual, yep. and they asked me to host a panel, and Esther was on it with yes. a few other people. We had a lot of fun, but it was super awkward because it was all virtual, Yeah, and I've never hosted a panel before in my life. But you're not um, okay. Was, I thought it was we, all right. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was, you know what, and the learning curve. Yeah. Yes. And somewhere on the dark web, I'm sure you can find this video. <laughs> <laughs> the dark <laughs> web. <laughs> See, there again, I don't know the dark web. But, but we, continue. we got to connect a few times mm -hmm. and did a little few practice rounds. And with our mutual friends of Patrick Allen uh, and all him. those other great denturists, mm -hmm. I know a lot about you, but I want to know more. Okay. So... Canada, right? Yes. So where in Canada? Uh, northwestern Canada. So uh, everyone's familiar with Vancouver. If yep. you jump in a car, I'm about nine hours north of Vancouver. Nine hours That's north. That's a long wow. north. You're yeah. up Is there. there nothing between there and Vancouver? <laughs> you can't <laughs> be like a little north from another town or it's just nine hours north? There's a few little small cities, um, but or a short one-hour flight. It's, it's not okay. That's yeah, not okay. bad. Yeah, that that sounds sense. better. But it's beautiful. It's a beautiful area of the I world. I bet. I bet. I mean, just wilderness? I mean, is it... Yeah. Yeah, it's a fair amount of wilderness. Um, very much we're like a logging industry town, uh, lots of mining in that area. We're situated sort of halfway between the Rocky Mountains and the ocean. Oh. So it is really pretty. You have the best awesome. of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Wow. So obviously, because I brought it up, you're a denturist. Yes. So yes. how did that come about? Oh, that's kind of a bit of a, an interesting story. I'm actually number six out of seven denturists in my family. Oh, wow. um, my uncle uh, was originally a denturist, which uh, my aunt, my mom's sister, married him. And he gave me my very first after-school job when I was in grade five. And in fifth grade, you were and working. what grade. was that? I got to yes, know. And that was the year HIV came out. Mm -hmm. And I was sterilization girl. And they didn't really know much. They were taking all these courses. And so I'd ride my bike down after school. And wow. I was, they had all these impression trays. Is there not a child labor law yeah, about not sterilization Yeah, not in northern Canada. Not <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I, and I was the cool kid because I always had spending money. But, yeah, so I would do all the sterilization, and it was wonderful. And um, and then, then I upgraded to the next worst job, which was polishing. And then slowly I started taking oh, over. Oh, you got all the fun stuff. All the fun huh? stuff. And then, you know, as you got older, the responsibilities got better. And, yeah. and it was, um, you know, he really taught me how to work. How to, you know how to get the lead out? Yeah, yep. You know, um, you know, instill values like that. But it really had just sort of um, put a love of teeth and the fact that every single person that walked into that clinic, you, you were helping them in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. It, was, it was really good. Yeah. Did you get a, any like hands on with the patient during this time? Or um, slowly by the you, time they keep the child <laughs> labor in the back. I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was, by I the time I uh, no. <laughs> by the time I reached about grade ten or eleven, um, I was allowed to do billing. Um, so I was working, you know, helping book appointments. And, oh yeah. And you know, billing insurance plans and things like that. That's crazy. Yeah, then so you basically grew up in Grew there. up, in, yeah. Then I, I graduated, um, worked with you know, a commercial dental lab, seeing no patients. Absolutely hated it. I just love the human side of things. How long were you um, there? Only about maybe nine months. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Really and then um, I went back to school and... Um, I uh, went back to college and got uh, a diploma in travel and tourism and became a travel agent for a number of years. Wow. And that's a switch of yeah, a gear. Yeah, it was crazy. And just what hate. drew you to that? Just she I loves just wanted, people. I love people. Yeah, I yep. wanted to travel. It just sort of seemed like a really, I don't know, neat thing. I don't know. At the time, you know, you're young and yeah. um, hated it. And <laughs> <laughs> And always regretted that I didn't it go. It would bother me to it. plan great trips for other people that I couldn't go on. <laughs> you know, the, kind of the funny thing is, is I actually travel more now in dental than oh, I, I did when do. I was actually oh, in the travel yeah. industry. Yeah. And I see now. Yeah, and I see more people in dental. So what yeah. drew you back? So you went out, you were a traveler. Um, How did yeah, you know you wanted so to come back? So the 9 11 happened, and it was actually my brother. And he's just like, he's like, Esther, you're not happy. And he goes, he goes, I just know what, I know you regret, and I regret, you know, going into dent back in, into being a dentist. I said, you know, I do. And he goes, you can do it. And I'm like, I can do it. And I was sort of having this, like, midlife, you know, it's almost approaching 30. And I thought, I should just go back to dental school. And so yeah. I did that. And I went back to dental school and um, 
and just never look back. And I think I really appreciated a lot more being more an adult than I would have had I done it as a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. So when you went back to dental school, was it focused on removable or did you learn was, everything yeah, and just go towards it? Um, so it was a dentures the diploma program oh. in Canada, and it was just strictly dentures. So it was uh, two years. Um, um, George school. Brown? Is that what uh, the name This one was actually Vancouver Community College at oh, okay. Vancouver. It's unfortunately no longer open. The, the government had closed it due to structural changes. but uh, And then it was one year apprenticing, and then I was invited back to do the board exams. And, wow. Yeah, so three So years. you said that there are seven of you. So yeah. who else? Your okay, so, so my, my, my uncle, who's uh, since passed away, my aunt, uh, his nephew on his side, who just, just retired, my aunt, who's another one of my mom's sisters, she just retired, two of my cousins, my sister and myself. Oh, my God. Yeah. And the brother that convinced you is not. No, he's a mechanic. He actually works for CN Rail. He's a diesel locomotive mechanic. <laughs> so are you guys all close to each other? Yeah, Do you work together? Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you, know, you can attend like a wedding or a funeral in our family and get CE credits. because. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, just uh, we just yeah, it's 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 really nice. Yeah. So tell us about your daily life. So oh, that's how gosh. you got into it. Are you in your own? Are you working for yes. a doctor? Uh, no, no, I have own? an independent practice. So I'm, I'm, I have the privilege of being both the clinician and the technician. Got it. So you know, if if the work in the labs you know comes in really bad, it's only myself because I did the work in the clinic. So yeah. I have to, you know, give myself the spanking and go back and take a better impression. <laughs> And so it's kind of nice. I think it really advances your skills a lot faster when you realize, oh, man, you know, how, um, getting those records in, in the chair are just so, so important to whether you're going to have success on, oh, on the technical side. Yeah. You certainly see the marriage between the two. Yeah, so day to day we're busy. Um, uh, we're a clinic of all women. Um, I've got two other dentures that work for me. Associates actually had three. Currently, I've got two. Um, we keep losing them to mat leaves, but they keep coming back, so that's nice. And wow, uh, there's nine women all together in my clinic, and we adopted fully removables. So if you can t- basically, if you can take it out at night and put it in a jar, we'll do it. So, you know, night guards, bleaching trays, uh, dentures, partial dentures, splints, all that type of stuff. So, so what is the name of the practice? It's a uh, Northern 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 Lights Dental yeah, Clinic. Northern yeah, Lights. yeah, we still come up with that. Oh, we see it. we have a well, lot like of the, uh, the yeah the Royal Borealis. Like yeah. you get to see that. Mm-hmm. That is on a bucket yes. list of yes. mine. Really? Yeah. It's I know it's where beautiful. I'm going to go. Yeah. I know. It just looks fascinating. Yeah. So when did you open the practice? Um, I worked with my, my, my cousin and my aunt for about five years, and then I took kind of the leap of faith and opened, and that would be in 2011. 2011. Yeah. And at that time, it was just you. At that time, it was just me, and then we just sort of really grew. And sort of my career kind of in like the whole speaking and traveling sort of started is um, I had had a whole row of dentures of lower dentures that like really fit well and then they didn't fit and I couldn't quite figure out why. And I kind of suffered from insomnia a bit and I was like Googling one night on my phone. I'm like, why do lower dentures sometimes get suction and sometimes don't? And I came across this prosthodontist in Japan, Dr. Yuro Abe. Abe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, this was years ago and I, I emailed him. I'm like, you have to come to Canada. I was, I was, um, I sat on the board for the Dentures Association of British Columbia oh, at wow. that time, yeah. and I was um, helped with their education and conventions, and I said, you just must come speak, and we, we need to learn how to do this, and no, no, we just couldn't come to Canada, and, and I was a busy man, so I said, well, okay, well, you know, I'll have to come to you, so I phoned my sister up, I'm like, we're going to Japan, and we booked his next course, and Damn. I just needed to see what That's it was all about, of you. yeah, and so we just, we, we took our husbands, we jumped on a plane, we went to Japan, and we did this course, and I'm just like, like the world needs to know about this. Like this yeah. is just amazing. So we started the journey with that, and um, so nobody in Canada knew about it. No, we were like my sister and I were basically like the second people in Canada to take the course. Wow. Why don't you find North out America? about it? Google at like three in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> that's when you had insomnia. Okay. Yeah, wow. so we did that, and um, and then so both my sister and I became instructors. Um, as long as we have, um, the Marcus Fisher also in Canada came in instructor, and we just put on a ton of courses and lectured and taught about it, and then. Um, there was I was um, at a speaking at a conference in uh, Canberra, Australia. We were having um, um, meetings for everybody that was these SEMCDs, lower sexual dentures. All the yeah, instructors yeah. came together, and, and I got the straw to go to Canberra. So it was actually kind of funny. It was it was our one warm week we actually got, and mm-hmm. like, we don't really get like warm summers. And so I was going to miss our one hot week in, uh. in Canada, and I get to Canberra and it was snowing. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm jinxed. So uh, it was kind of funny, but so I was so jet lagged. You know, I'm doing my thing, and then um, I thought, okay, well. And it was in this beautiful theater hall, and the seats were super comfortable. So I just kind of like, you know, sat back. I'm like, I'm just going to listen to what they have to say. I've been to a million conferences, but and this gentleman gets on the stage, and his wife was like an orthodontist, and 
and he was playing around with her Trio Centaurus camera, and he was using Mesh Mixer and our PD module in 3Shape, and he was making immediate dentures. Mm. And I was That's just cool. like, jaw on floor. I was yeah. like, could you believe knew that. or what? I knew, I knew instantly. That was, that was in 2016. <laughs> Wow, that was and early. It was early, early. And it was, um, his name was John Batchelor. A lot of people are familiar with JB. And uh, JB had this little, uh, was, you know, amalgamate, uh, very much close to this relationship with Peter Anastasia. And they, and they were, they were kind of like the godfathers of these digital yeah. ventures. And we just became super good friends. And they were just, they took me under their wing. And I kind of like ruthlessly stalked them. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, and, and that's sort of how, how we kind of ended up bringing digital dentures into Western Canada was, was through them. So yeah. nobody was doing it? Not at this point. We had, we had the Avident um, yeah. option. Yeah, but, yeah. remember that. But, you know, and, and we, you know, that was good. And, and I really think that, you know, they they always will be our forefathers of digital dentures. Like, yeah. they really did pave the way. Um, and, you know, almost maybe even slightly even ahead of their time from mm-hmm. when it did yeah, come out. Yeah, they came out they, you know, they could tr- yeah. Yeah, but, uh, and, you know, and I think that they really set certain standards and certain expectations for what we were expecting and even just kind of worked on workflows. And yeah, absolutely. I, they will always have a spot in my heart for, for what it is they, they did and pioneered and trailblazed for us on that. But, uh, yeah, so when we did it, we, um, we we went full bore. We bought one to three shape and bought printers and we yeah what email. printer like to well talk to oh us gosh about you know <laughs> you know that. it's so funny when you you know you decide you're gonna go digital and it's actually at chicago it was chicago f- f- about five or s- five years ago and i'm that's it i'm doing it and repping the mad eight off and going digital yeah. so i you don't even know what to ask for like you know and i don't speak the digital language so nah. i walked around to all the booths and i have my little notepad and i'm like i'm gonna buy a printer that's within my price range that has the best microns so thinking it's all had to do with accuracy so i'm yeah. going around going around and i'm like this one's got 50 microns this is 75 microns so i buy this printer and we like printed down to like 50 microns which i think was pretty darn good and took it home um <laughs> i didn't have a scanner i didn't have any software to design anything but i had a printer <laughs> You know if how I many, build it, it will come. It will come. If you build it, it will come. I've had so many dentists tell me, you think I ought to get a printer? I'm like, well, what software are you going to use? What? Oh, well, I, oh, what do you think? It just magically appears in that Well, apparently I, apparently I was in that group. So, <laughs> so, so it was stare- another 3 a.m. morning. Yeah, Googling so I'm staring software. at this printer. And I think I needed to do that, though, because I think it kind of yeah. – and I laughed Probably about it. Probably pushed you. Yeah, I had to push more. it. Yeah, and I laughed about it. and. So then we start to get the pieces. We start using this printer only to realize it had 23-hour print times. It was a question oh, I didn't wait, have. Man, that's 23, 23 hours? hour print times. They, the company doesn't exist anymore. I so. would imagine yeah, they so. did. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what? Wow. I, you know what? That, I learned so much on that little printer. Yeah. You know, And then we kind of jumped around. We got some other printers. And then um, our fifth and our sixth 3D printer ended up being a Seagas. And we run the little Seagas. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. like little workhorses. Oh, they are just amazing. hear so many oh good God. things about they that just company. And they're open. And they're just easy to use. And um, yeah, I just love them. They don't take a huge footprint. They're not loud. They're just, yeah, they're great. So we currently run two Asiga Maxes, um, two PM7s, and I've yeah. got two PM7s. Uh, wow! Yeah. Gosh, I just love them. Yeah, but we so only do removables. We don't do any other milling. Like we don't do no. So are you all digital, or do you do some parts um, analog? I think that probably in the world of dentures, we are about as digital as you can get. Yeah. In today's standards. Okay. Yeah. Meaning? Meaning that like, we will still take an analog polyvinyl impression yeah. and then scan that in. Yeah. You know, there's still you know we still certain things that you kind of have to cross back over For into accuracy. And fit exactly, and, and you just, I just, I mean, I love intraoral scanning, but it's it's not muco compressive, it's muco static, and there's no way that you can actually properly record all the soft tissue uh, yeah. attachments and molds. And it's an it's an open impression, so retro roll pads are just displaced and distorted. And I just, yeah, yeah it's not no, a function. It's not Those a are functional. You have to have. They are. They really yeah. are in the removable world, yeah. because unfortunately, um, this isn't a fixed appliance. Like it's. You know, it, it can, you know, you smile and these lower dentures can pop up. So if you don't have a proper border molded impression with a properly made custom tray, I, I think you're going to be at a loss. It'll be yeah. a failure. Yeah. So do yeah. you use special impression material that's scannable? You know, pretty much now, you know, um, especially with uh, with the three-shape scanners, almost everything is scannable. Like sometimes really? it's a little bit wet, like we have to dry it off. Yeah. Uh, we do have a little bit of a, like a, um, a really, uh, scanning powder. Like powder. A, I love, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. the the three-shape scanning powder. Just kind of dust it with like a makeup brush yeah. and dust it if, if there's a little spot that we need to get. But it's so scannable. Um, not, you know, not to like tote different brands, but I'm kind of addicted to the Ivoclar virtual impression material. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. It's one of the only ones that when you're taking your, your impression, if you see a pressure point, you can grind it and it's grindable. And then you can go back over and do a wash and it doesn't like rip the whole impression right Interesting. out. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. So um, especially if you kind of get into some like the advanced um, 
a final impression taking techniques. You take an impression, you grind, grind, grind. You go back and take impression over again. You grind, grind, grind until you have this no. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So with some of them, like. Um, Patients so, cussing you out for their third impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pain, no gain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like say, you gotta suffer to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're gonna get you there. We're gonna get you there. Yeah. <laughs> so you're using that material on yeah. impressions, and then yeah. you're scanning with. Um, we have um, an E3 scanner. Like okay. we have the original E3. It's not even the red. Um, it's, a, it's probably gonna die any time now. I, I'm really eyeing up that new. Yeah, I was just F- gonna say. Oh you, I'm sure oh. you're looking for something. So you put a. Impression in the desktop? We, we have two trioses. We have a trios uh, three and a four. And we will use that for all of our um, like uh, partial dentures and immediate dentures. Yep. Um, and if a person is a, um, like let's say a full upper over natural lower, um, I'll take their upper impression and then one, and then as that setting, I'll scan their bottom, wow. <laughs> yeah. right? They pull yeah. it out, scan the, the polyvinyl in the upper. With the intraoral. With, with the intraoral, yeah. pop it back in and scan their bite together. And so you can get them in and out on final impressions. In so you like, get their bite uh, with the tray? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't see why that wouldn't work. Yeah. And it's all done, in one, all done in one appointment. So do you print models every time? Um, we will then print a model, especially if there's going to be a bite change. Yep. Yeah, but if there's no bite change, then no. No, you just no straight to finish. Straight Are to finish. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's working. Oh gosh, yeah. We're, we're we've um, and keep in mind we you know this is we just we produce for ourselves, but uh, we're pushing close to five thousand milled arches and probably close to about nine thousand printed prototypes and immediate transitional dentures. And that's stuff. awesome. So we've done a lot, like that's we've done a few, a lot. and we've had a lot of failures. <laughs> so they, yeah. So you know we've kind of gone we've gone both ways. Like you know, if if it can be broken, we've done it. If so, it, like, yeah. talk to me about a failure so that whoever's listening can learn something. Yeah. You know, like, like, what? like you know, I think our failures are, well, a failure is also going to be in, in the eye of the technician as well. You know, yes, yeah, true. Our, our first digital dentures, they were pretty ugly. Like, you know, they, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be sure. really honest with you. And I think that there was really a bit of a learning curve as to when you're seeing something and it looks 3D on a screen, but actually, in fact, it's only 2D, yeah. you know, and you're rotating it. And then to actually see it manufactured in a printed or milled form, it looks different, right? Yeah. You know, all of a sudden it's Big like, time. you know, quad yeah. ones way out here. Yes. <laughs> or, you know, or you don't realize how much like the necks of the eye teeth or, the, you know, the canines yes. are tilted in. And I think it took like, you know, quite a few cases before you start to kind of connect what it is that you were almost seeing on the screen to, reality. to what reality actually was. Yeah. Um, you know, and we were so proud of our first few cases. And then two years later, when they started coming in to have relines and rebases. You we were like, yeah, we're just going to mill you another one. <laughs> <laughs> And it's going it to look better. better. <laughs> 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 and I don't, want anybody, I don't want anyone to see that. But they, they were still beautiful cases. But, you know, honestly, like, yeah. you know, it's like anything else. You, know, you come out of dental school and, you know, you're, you're so proud of your first few cases. And then oh, yeah. two years later, yeah. you come back, you're like, who oh, was that? Oh, gosh, I'm so glad they returned back to me. <laughs> but we're going to fix that midline. <laughs> But you can reline digital dentures. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yes. Do that. See, you I'm know, not a... Yeah. Sorry. You know what? And actually, I think that's really the beautiful part about it, especially with a system like the iVotion system, is it still is the exact same PMMA that we've been used to for like the last like 20, 30, 40, 50 well, years. It's still right? made out of acrylic. It's isn't still made it? out of acrylic. It's yeah. iVo-based acrylic. The same, adi- same material that's in our iVo-based sp- yeah. iVo machines. Do yeah. you guys have iVo-bases? We sure too? do. Yeah, we, yeah, we run three of them. We still... And then some cases... Why do you even bother? Well, you know, and that's actually kind of a good <laughs> question. Um, because we're clinic and lab, you know, when we're going to do, for example, I don't like reline. I was, I'm a firm believer in rebasing instead of relining. You know, it gets rid of all the old bacteria. What's the difference? Um, a rebase is all of the pink gets cut off and all the pink gets put back on okay. again. A reline is just like a little tiny, like a layer on the inside. In case you didn't gotcha. know, Barb is not a removable technician. Uh, actually, well, but yeah. I, I bet that's why I'm asking. No, no, it's, it's a great question. question. It's a great question. And great I, this question. is what I always tell my patients. Um, you know, it is recommended to have a rebase every three years, every two years in Canada. Um, and it does three things. Number one is it tightens them up. And that's why people come in. Oh, my yeah, teeth yeah. are loose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why, you know, so it's, that's kind of the thing that they always think it, ha- you know, it's solving. Yep. But what we don't talk about is that plastic is just plastic. Mm-hmm. Forget, forget that it's a medical appliance. It's the same as a car seat. It's the same as anything. And over time, and it, w- it, it, it <laughs> becomes brittle. Like, you yeah. know, it's prone to cracking and breaking. Yeah. That's why our car seats expire for that's our children in our car. Because shouldn't the event we be in an accident, they, they're brittle. They're just not strong. As yeah, it's like that. helmets. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the third reason, they are porous. Like, take a look at these things. Like, yeah. do slides of them and, and look at the bacteria levels and the candida levels that I are. I don't want things. to. You know, you, <laughs> so that you just gr- keeps the patients yeah. healthy by yeah, doing they, they that. Yeah, they don't taste or smell as fresh stuff. as they did yeah, two years okay. ago. And you, know, you grind them, and they're they're 
Yeah, they're pretty funky. Yeah, so, you know, but having all that fresh. So if, for a while there, we were using the copied entry format and we were doing digital rebases, but yeah. we kind of had a hard time with patients surrendering their old teeth to us to get the new ones. And, and, it, and then also it really tied up our mill. So our rebases, now we still use our Ivo base. We, so you smart. You yeah. Matrix the teeth, yeah, remove flaskets. the acrylic, yeah, yeah, all yeah. And then, school, and yeah. then you know what? Honestly, like we take a, we do our our, our portable, proper PVS portable impressions in the morning, and they have those rebases back by one o'clock that yeah. afternoon. Yeah, it's it's pretty fast. So. Have, do you ever have a patient that had a digital then rebased into traditional? Yes. And they now they like it more. They they can't tell. They honestly they can't, can't tell. But because when you're flasking it, you're still getting that same uniform two millimeter thickness that yep. the digital had given you. Yeah. So but you, know, you have don't you add the fibers and all that? Or? Um, there is actually if you take a look, really good close look at the Ive Ocean puck, there's fibers in the. Puck. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you choose a preference, um, we don't. We just seem to always use preference. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's little fibers in it. Oh, so, yeah, they really don't, they can't they tell. They cannot tell. That's no. amazing. They cannot tell. So, uh, talk to me about the PM7. Yes. Mm -hmm. And milling. Mm -hmm. The dentures? Yes. So how many can you do? How fast are they? I like, mean, what is that whole workflow? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it depends on arch size, which would then determine the speed of the mill. I think, in, in my mind, even if I was to buy a mill today, it still would be another PM7 if I was to get a third one. And the reason being is that Avacar has a proprietary overmilling size st strategy for dentures. So Don't say you want a third one too loud. They're all right here. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> They'll sell you one in a RB. So oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, you know, after seeing that scanner and then the Trios 5 and then uh, my colleague was at the Mod Jaw. You've uh, got a thing. list, right? I mean, the list is very expensive and very long. Yeah. <laughs> Worst part about coming to these things, we all want it. Um, when we're in dental school and we, a patient comes in and they have a sore spot or they have an adjustment, um, yeah. you know, it is just absolutely hammered into our head. It's occlusion, occlusion, occlusion. You know, it's all about that. Sure. And when something is not fixed, it's literally just balancing the mouth on a very, very light suction kind of mechanism. Yeah, yeah. You know, by establishing negative so you pressure. you feel everything. Exactly. So if they bite down and they deflect a little early on even just one slight tooth, it's going to pop the denture out and the denture is going to fall right out. So wow. it's really, really important in removables that you just have, you are absolutely establishing your, 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 your bite every single time and you don't have any deflections when you're going into kind of like a mortar and pestle. It has to be yeah. like butter. It has to be absolutely yeah. smooth. So when we're processing analog or if we're processing where we're slipping in carded teeth, if even one tooth is just a little tiny bit not perfect, you've got an occlusion issue, yeah. right? And you've got to mill it in. Yeah. With uh, Ivocard's method um, is that we, we mill the base, we mill the teeth, we pop it in, or you can mill it even in one piece, and then it goes back into the mill and it mills everything. So even if the teeth are just off by, let's say, 100 microns or something like that, it still mills the entire closed surface of the tooth back to perfect occlusion so that you've done in your wow. design. So if you design it and it's not perfect... Well, then it's it not going to be perfect. Okay, yeah. yeah. Then yeah. it doesn't fix Then it doesn't fix yeah. Yes, it's never going to fix sloppy clinical work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that so if sense. you took a sloppy bite or you took... Well, yeah. yeah, so going back to that's where we... It's not yeah. a miracle work. No, <laughs> no, no. And in fact, it, I think it almost makes what you've done in the chair room, it, it, it just, it, you know, it, it really... Um, makes it more pronounced, right? You can, yeah. If, if you've done an error, it really shows the error. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's so much more accurate, right? Yeah. yeah. So How quick can you design a denture now and um, if it's if it's a simple, like we're not talking like some like really funky, you know, yeah. class two crossbite, yeah, you know, yeah, something, yeah. you know, you know, or, you know, a cleft pal or something kind of yeah. crazy, uh, between 20 to 35 minutes for, for a full full. Yeah. yeah. That's not bad. No, no. Compared to 23 hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, for the milling, that's the design time. Oh, yeah. That's oh, scanning oh, and design. Okay. Yeah. That would be if everything goes good. Uh, milling time between two to two and a half hours. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's, yeah. I love yeah. it. I do my temporaries now on the PM7 and yeah. we just blow right through them. It's just fast. It's oh, accurate. Fast. Yeah. And we kind of do like the step ones, like we mill the bases and the teeth during the day and then we pop them all in and then step twos go at night. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah. Because the step yeah. two is the, the longer. It takes, you know. So is that like a puck? Mm -hmm. or yeah, like it's, how like, it's like a puck, just just like a zirconia puck, but thicker. Yeah, and it's just sort of in the same holder that the zirconia would be in. And do they have different depths of thickness? They do, I believe. Oh, going off the top of my brain. I think that they, the tooth puck is like 20 millimeters, and then like, and then we're going up to like a 30 millimeter, and you can then nest the teeth out, so you can kind of go up to like 35 millimeter. Wow. There is the odd patient that doesn't fit in a puck. That's there, what I was going to say. There is the odd patient. What are those um, palettes that are like We this? have the yes. same thing. Yes. Yes. And for the podcast, I'm making a high arch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, totally. I can see it. Yeah, and then we're going to go back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print the base. I mill the teeth. And then the printed base, uh, we flask it. And we mm -hmm. ivo base it because it's still ivo base wow. material. So quite often I can mill the lower 
but then I have to, I've always sap her, but it's still the same material. And so they, they can't tell. They can't tell. That's it's awesome. And because it's world. printed, you still get the exact same uniform thickness. Clean. That's so neat. So in a way, it still is a digital denture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Or dig a digital hybrid denture, we'll call it that. Yeah. Yeah. What about on implants? Do you deal any oh, with that? Oh, gosh. Yeah, we do a ton. And do it's you really? Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. wow. and You're you know, in the middle of nowhere. How many people? No, yeah. no. It's oh, uh, well, Prince George She's just nine, mi nine hours, but it's <laughs> nine not hours in the middle of city. nowhere. <laughs> from the, from it's a another big city. city. We are another city. Prince George actually is it's qu it's quite a neat little place. Uh, we've got a population in city proper of about nine about 90,000. People that commute to the city every day, about 125. Okay. But, we, but we're, the, we're sort of the last city that services the north. So we have everybody comes from all the other small little communities um, oh. down um, we're, like, we've got a cancer treatment center we've um, lots of um, you know the logging headquarters mining headquarters everything's in Prince George so um, we have a ton of um, First Nations reservations that we serve as a huge high oh, yeah. Aboriginal population in northern Canada. So <gasps> really, yeah. So they come oh, and, they, and then they just yeah. That will they, um, it's really great. There's programs, but and this is where I think digital has just been such a such a godsend in our clinic because um, they'll come in and they're you know come in every once every six months and they're only here for five days and they got to do eyes, teeth, ears. Oh, <laughs> you know, geez, they've got yeah. all, they, you know, they got all their appointments yeah. booked and and so they, they and we have time is an issue. Time is an issue, and we need to get something successful. And then we're not going to see them for six more months. And so, you know, we need to make sure that they're you know, comfortable. People, they fit right. There's no are, high spots. Yeah. And yeah. And they're in these remote communities. Yeah. And we make sure that we're giving them the same level of care as somebody who's maybe down the street in two blocks. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know about the law, but are you doing like hygiene at your office? We're not doing the hygiene. Um, not on like natural teeth. But yeah. We do obviously denture hygiene. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So when these people come from we, outskirts, we, they start somewhere else and yeah. then get sent to you? You know, we're just... It's, oh, man, we're so blessed. We have such a wonderful relationship with um, the local dentists in our community. Nice. And the majority of denture patients are actually unattached, which means that they haven't seen a dentist in 10 well, or more yeah, years. So, yeah. you know, yeah. there's a reason, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and it could be, a lot of it has to do with phobia. Like, dental phobia is really, really huge. high. It's yeah. huge. I, I read somewhere, don't quote me, I read somewhere, but it, it's equal to or higher than even a, a phobia of spiders. Like, it, yeah. it's... And I'm, I'm, I'm related to some, and yeah, it just blows my mind. I'm like, oh. you know... And I mean, no one wants to be the chair. I'm, the, I'm probably the worst dental patient. I, I white knuckle it, and I don't even like to being in the dental chair. But it, it's you know, but you know, we we have to do it. But um, there's a reason why they've lost their teeth in the first place. Yep. You know, or, yeah. or we're dealing with trauma, or you know, we're dealing with fear. Um, yeah, fear. Um, you know, you know, accidents, um, spousal abuse, drug addictions. There just is a million things as to why yeah. people lost teeth. Sometimes it's just good old-fashioned genetics. You know, you know, sometimes we're dealing with things like bulimia, or we're dealing with uh, cancer treatments yeah. where people have had you know radiation exposure in the thyroid and it just kills. Well, themselves. we just learned recently about. The aging population, medication, and dry oh mouth. Oh, gosh, it's just it out, yeah. terrible. It's just terrible. Yeah. So you just never know the reason why that person sort of ends up in your chair. And, you know, it's... I think that you yeah. can feel that attachment that you have from people. And you always said you loved people and that you feel that when you're oh. talking about it because there are so but many changes, things. It doesn't matter what we are in industry. We're changing... We, I hate... I, that slogan so overused, but we are changing people's lives, yeah. really. Yeah. And I think the beautiful part about going back to our dental community is that when we're seeing these patients, and they're complex cases, and we're referring the the the, the, the natural tooth side back to dentists. Yeah. So then they just refer us all of the denture work, right? Yeah. Because it's like right. they don't want to touch the they, they don't want to touch the denture work. Yep. We obviously can't touch any of like the restorative if they right. need crowns or yep. if they need root canals or if they need you know just even a general cleaning. So it's a really good marriage between the oh between that's the important because you hear some horror stories out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and dentists and, and I, I just really wish that dentures would be all over the world um, and recognized because it is just Plus such a compliment. Yeah. It is such a compliment to the dental industry, and you know it's I, I know that my the colleagues I work with they find dentures are a blessing, and and I and my dentist I I love them, and it's. It works really well. Are you the only denturist in the area? Um, I'm not. There's actually um, there's actually three other offices. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, my cousins have. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Related to all of them. <laughs> Yeah, although they're, they're great, it's, it's lovely. Cause, and sometimes, you know, I, I think also finding finding your own uh, clinician is a little bit like finding your hairdresser. You got to find someone you click with. So, yeah. oh, it, you, yes. know, you know, <laughs> so true, <laughs> so true. And you got to feel, you gotta be comfortable. I and like the hairdresser analogy. It's, it's so true. true and it's it, it's not that that's maybe a bad hairdresser, there, but you know, they, just, they gave you the Rachel haircut from 1992, not the one you wanted. And you don't, to don't say. like it. <laughs> the and Rachel then you can't haircut. tell her, so you just leave. I know because right? you know her feelings. Because yep. you know, your kids go to the same daycare. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah.
<laughs> so um, it's important that you do find someone that you click with. And I, and I think that's even even the dentures within in, in our community and surrounding areas. Uh, we all have beers together. We're, it's, it's, it's a good, and we can refer back and forth. So, you know, I said, you know what? I just think maybe you need a second opinion. And I want you to go see these people. And, and listen, you know, if it's not working, I'll, I'll transfer the, the money you've deposited. We'll put it over there. And they oh, can, wow. Yeah, like you guys are that like, close, yeah. Like, you know, yeah, wow. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, you know. Do you guys have, like, a study group or anything? Um, not particularly just within my community, um, but I did start a study group, group um, for Western Canada. Nice. Uh, for anybody going into digital dentures. It's now expanded. We actually have a couple of people in the States. So we have some people, lots of people now from Western Canada, Eastern Canada, I should say. The only criteria is that you have to be in removables, yeah. and you have to be going into digital dentures. And I think we've got 86 clinics, and it's, like, wow. the bat signal because it's, it's actually a Facebook chat, like a messenger chat. Yeah, yeah. And you put it on there, and it's almost like a competition of who can answer fastest like it's nice. re- it is such a collaborative group um that helps yeah and then we um is it open to anyone it's to open join? to anyone to join how do they find it um it's called um, on facebook go into the international digital denture study club and then we'll and then just ask for an invite we'll put you over to it we and know where he's going yes no, i want to check it out yeah i know yeah and we I actually have a study it. club meeting um this will now be our third one it's going to be in Kelowna in april um and none of the speakers are sponsored everyone speaks for free and we oh, say wow. the truth so that's sponsors important. are in the hallway that's great and we tell you exactly how it's going That's and important. it is the amount of the amount that people learn is is job dropping and this year uh, we've got uh, people coming from Europe uh, to, to speak Australia New Zealand uh, coming from all those wow. states yeah so it's quite a quite a big group it's gonna be in Kelowna Kelowna British Columbia which is wine country so it's beautiful so oh. you like wine oh gosh I like yes. this girl yes I like wine I already liked you but I like wine yeah. I like beer I like Actually, I'm, I, we also want a craft brewery. And yeah, yeah. So I was going to get to that. <laughs> oh, talk about that. That. W- that was the bomb at the end I was, was going to the bomb at the end? Are you I love it. Me? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she has so much free time. I know. Well, I you know, know, I thought, I, you know. <laughs> Oh gosh, I tell you, I do it to myself. I'm a victim of myself. Yeah. We were at a we were at a conference. Actually, it was a Tony Robbins conference a few years ago. <gasps> oh yeah. Oh, my gosh, I love that guy. Yeah. Yep. And I took my office manager, my treatment coordinator. And we're sitting there. And we're just like getting like, like basically, I call it like a business spanking. Like you know, he's yeah. <laughs> a business <laughs> spanking. Yeah. yeah. Like get, your get head the, out of your. You exactly. know exactly. <laughs> and sometimes we almost need that mindset. Just get yourself out of your own head, right? And. And I sort of realized, like, within my clinic, like, if I went skiing and broke my arm, I've got, like, nine families. I, I'm, like, and I have single moms that work for me. And, yeah. and oh, I kind of always had, like, a little bit heavy. of a panic attack going, yeah. oh, my gosh. Like, this, is, this is, like, response. Bonds, like yeah. the responsibility is actually we even had a ski cap at that time, which we've <laughs> since sold. But um, you know, there was a huge heavy responsibility, and so you know, we're sitting there after this conference, and you know, we're at a brewery, we're drinking beer, and we're like, gosh, you know, every time we go, we'd always go for craft beer. We yeah, always, yeah. We're like, hey, there's no craft beer in our community. Like, how hard can it be to brew beer? Famous last question. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, so my treatment coordinator and myself, we sent our husbands to Prague, Czech Republic, to go to brewery school. <laughs> <laughs> that is so brilliant. You How got rid of them for a little while. Um, well, they had actually already had kind of been brewing on like a home level and yeah. stuff. So it was, it was super, super intense. I think they were there for like a couple months. And, wow. And so they came back and we're like, we're opening a craft brewery. We're going to do this. This is just. You guys have it. like those big steel or whatever. We I do. Mean, yeah. 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 So when we came back, we're shopping and, you know, we're, we're buying all this. We're starting to buy all this. Equipment. We're like, yeah, we're doing this. This is going to be great. And then we ended up um, a, a craft brewery that was um, in the same province that we're in was upgrading and they were selling their old system and like stainless steel. I mean, oh, that's that. pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah. And so it just ended up being like, oh, How perfect. does that even happen? Oh, it was honestly, it was like a miracle. Like it was really like a miracle that that even did happen. It was timing. It was all yeah. right. And, and so... um Anyways, we ended up buying it, but it was quite a bit larger, so we ended up having to actually hire a professional brewer sure. to handle What's it. What's the name of the brewery? Uh, Trench Brewing, just like Trench Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> is that where it comes from? Well, is that know? where you came up with it? <laughs> no, I like. No, we actually had this kind of this law with because it's um, my treatment coordinator, and her husband, and me and my husband. So it's the four us, two couples, four people, and we had a law that if three people like something, the fourth was outvoted. We voted off the island, and I'm like, I just did not like the name. But Prince George is actually the base of the Rocky Mountain Trench. It's this natural oh, divide okay. that divides the northern and south of Rocky Mountain. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, you'll never forget it. And it's That's uh, yeah, great. And we're, Trench mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, we're like the largest, we're like the uh, largest brewery north of uh, Vancouver, north of Kelowna. So, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. So how many beers do you guys do? Uh, currently we do between, we always have between 9 and 11 different on tap. Wow. We specialize in hazy IPAs. 9 and 11? We have somewhere bounce between the two. We have a, specialize, our hazy IPAs are number one seller. And yeah. So do you come up with different 
I'm just the official taste tester. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> you have so nothing to do with do it? Cha- oh, that's great. But the husband's now doing that full time? No, I, uh, I, I'm more on the business side of things. Yeah. yeah. Good, yeah I, good. The, 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 sorry, the clinic just keeps me full time. Yeah. Sure, I yeah. bet. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. And probably yeah. weekends and really late at night. But you have work life. It seems like you have yeah. work life balance. You've oh, got God. kids. I'm sure so you don't have like to do it. Oh, okay. No, I said you perfect. said I've got a husband. I have a husband. Yeah, he's my child. Oh, no doubt. I got rid of mine. has helped you. With oh. that work life, I imagine. Huge. Yeah. Huge. I bet you used to be there till midnight. Oh, my goodness. Easily. You know, you know, I made a promise to my team when we were going digital because we actually had a little bit of a, almost like a panic attack within my clinic. And I, I promised them that no one was going to lose their jobs. As in, you know, we, really we might have to retrain you, but yeah. I, I vowed that no one was going to lose their jobs if we went digital. And no one did. But and nobody will. if they moved, we didn't necessarily replace that job, right? Yeah, and that makes so, sense. You know, and, and you know, people do move, and people, you know, happens, ret- yeah. a couple retire. We, you know, some things like that. So, it used to be that it was just me. I was the single practitioner, and I used to have f- almost four, the three and a half people in the lab that supported me. Mm-hmm. Now we went up to four dentures. We're at three dentures right now, and we have one and a half people in the lab because That's digital crazy. takes right Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So then, you know, and it's just so hard to find specialized movable tech technicians and so now you are so right and so now the digital does the grunt work that nobody wants to do anyway sure and then the trained people can do what they're actually trained to do yep. See, and, and we heard it again yeah i totally agree yeah you've got to have that technical experience oh my and goodness skill oh, and brains so much and knowledge and yeah it just so is not we're not getting rid of the technician we're enhancing the technician and right. we're giving them a tool that's actually yeah. going to help to help out three do you give all your referring clients growlers of beer oh <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> um, I have done an open study club for the dental community in Prince George, and I invited them, and we just shut the brewery down. Oh, and we great. had dental nights, and yeah, and had and some beer, had some and beer, some yeah. CE, <laughs> and more beer. It was actually kind of funny because I'm like, I, was, I finally, I'm like, we should just do this, and I put the invite out, and we just like we like we maxed out, like everyone were, it was, yeah. was standing room only, it was great. And I was in a little bit of a mood at that night, and I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> What's the definition of a little bit of a mood? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I've got a captive audience to drink him up here. I'm going to tell them what irritates me about the communication levels between a dental team. And tell them the truth. And you know, it's like when people come in and they hate their lower dentures and they're talking to the dentist. They're like, you'll just tell us you only need a lower denture. And the upper is like 30 years old and yeah. it's got no teeth. I'm like, don't. Tell them that they need just a new lower when like it's like, it it's like shoes like like the tread needs to match. Hey, can't replace you know? shoes. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, so true. I don't do this. I don't do that. And it was and you know, of course everyone's you, you have like receptionists and hygienists and they're elbowing their dentists like yeah. easy. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so it was it was before a lot of really good laughs, and I'm actually really glad I did it. Like it was, I was really glad. I just you know, I think well, the conversation having to be a had. little beer gives you a little bit of a push to mm. say things that need to be said. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think we got to end up. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think this thing starts till 4.30, so I think we're good. We just want to make sure we don't uh, people don't start yeah. talking over I don't us think they have an audience, so okay. I think we're good. What time are you starting? Hi, George. Hi, how are you? How are you? Sorry, Sorry, we're right in the middle. I just want to see you. What time are you guys going to get loud? Uh, I think they come in at 4.30. Okay, okay right, we're, we're good. good. Okay. Thank so what you. I wanted to ask, no, that's good. a big that's problem perfect. in America is insurance mm. covering dentures. Is it any better in Canada? You know, um, oh gosh, insurance. Our nemesis and our blessing, right? Yeah. It's sort of. Totally. It, it's, it's tough. Um, so it's just as bad here. It, it, well, <laughs> I would say that actually probably Canada, I think we are a little bit better in yeah. some ways. And certain, If you have insurance through an employer, um, and let's just say, I mean, I'll pick on a company, let's say Pacific Blue Cross or, or Great West Life for Sun Life. Yeah. It depends on how that employer has negotiated the plan for you. So so oh. like you might be with Sun Life and you might be with Sun Life, but they're different. They're different plans within yeah. Sun Life, right? And, and you know, and then there's they're capped, like they might be maximum five thousand dollars a year for a family. So you know, if your daughter just got braces and your you're husband, done. Yeah, had, yeah, yeah, you're done. <laughs> you you yeah. have fifty cents, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so everyone's got different rules and different things. We uh, British Columbia, we were very very fortunate because um, our First Nations uh, patients uh, were part of a federal funding program called ESI, and it really only funded a, like about 50, just about 50, 60% of what the cost of adventure was. And it was really tough, like, yeah. you know, yeah. really tough. So uh, they actually um, went privatized, split off from the federal government. And they actually, we use the, the specific Blue Cross now for their funding and they're funding, like they're funding the full thing now. So it's, it's really nice to see uh, certain groups actually get coverage 
for the first time, you know, especially Ever. that are, are vulnerable and, you know, they've been in positions where there's been a lot of generational trauma and things like that that they've lost, or, you know, they've, they've had health care issues yeah. and now we're actually able to, to treat it from a medical standpoint, which has wow. been wonderful. Yeah. Uh, in British Columbia, uh, there's absolutely no help for seniors, which is really, really unfortunate. Really? So let's just say, you know, you, you and your husband, you had like a small home, uh, small business your entire life and you didn't have a retirement plan because you were independent and you're now 65. There's no addition. There's no like social security type thing or they um, there's into. social security, but it doesn't cover health, uh, dental. And then if you're under um, like social assistance, uh, like our ministry, like uh, kind of like the welfare system, yeah. um, they will cover, but uh, you know, like an upper denture, right? I was like, I think 1600 and they only cover like $500. Is so. most of the work you do insurance based or is I was going to ask that. I yeah. Was curious in in our area, we're very, very blue collar. So a lot of patients will actually have three insurance plans. Wow. So oh, they wow. will come in and they'll have the plan from their work. They will have then coverage from their husband's work and they will be first nations. And you can take so, it all. Yep. And you all, can yeah. work with yes, them. Yes. You, you exhaust. Can you do that in America? I don't yeah. Think I don't think so. Yeah, you exhaust the first plan, then you go. Then oh, whatever's great. left over, you then build your second plan. Oh, if there's anything left over, that. then you build the third wow. plan. Yeah. Wow. So it's a lot of paperwork for our Sounds receptionist like team. Yeah. Like it's a bit of a billing nightmare, but they. Um, I was going to say you probably have a full time. We do. There's time people three working girls on that. that. Work on yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Especially as large as your practice yeah. is. That's yeah. probably. Yeah. So I would say I think we're very fortunate to have the level of insurance care that we do have. Yeah. But it's not perfect, and absolutely does not cover implants. There's there's no insurance company that covers that. There is the odd plan that will cover um, a restoration if the implant is already pre-existing. Oh, That's interesting. Good. Yeah, so yeah. if they come in and let's say they've got no bar, they've got no caters, they will then cover the implant denture, but yeah. they will not cover the placement of the implant. You get a lot of locator cases up there? Yeah, quite yeah. a few. Yeah, cool. yeah. We sort of tend to be, I would say... Um, in our neck of the woods, not that much for fixed. Just a lot to do with hygiene issues. Yeah, and, sure. and, you know, our prosthodontists and, and oral surgeon, they just sort of really feel that, it, you know, they kind of lost their teeth for a reason. Usually, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. unless it's going into a zirconia restoration, we don't have a lot for fixed. But we do we do a ton of mill bar over dentures, tons of locators, and we've actually been doing a lot of conus cases. No kidding, yeah. conus. Yeah, huh? yeah. That's kind of it, uh, it, right it took... Um, a while, but I really like them. And yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Uh, it definitely was a learning curve, and you know. <laughs> so, when you work with surgeons that place yeah. these implants, do yeah. you do they bring you in on the treatment plan? Uh, yes, one hundred percent. So, even if they're talking about it, the first referral comes back to us. Uh, we do the scan. We do kind of a preliminary diagnostic kind of design. We cross section that design. And we say this is exactly how much space we have. Therefore, they can only have this, this, and this. Wow. Unless you want to do bone reduction, then we can do this, this, and this. And they take that to heart and oh, they do it, huh? they do it 100%. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah so they are super, super uh, respectful. And, and that and way you get them where you need them. Yeah. And they're not asking and for yeah, the and impossible. And then we do what we call, um, I do a free surgical guide, not like a bone surgical guide, but I do a free prosthetic surgical guide for any dentist that wants to that's placing that's implants. Holy so shmoly. what I do is so I just important. basically 3D print. It only costs me a couple of dollars and it's just, it just worth it and it solidifies your relationship to the implants they want to place you Heck go yeah there. yes and then you're creating that trust yeah. and that loyalty so, and, and it's they so need pretty easy. I duplicate it yeah. you pretty don't want a free surgical guy yeah I pr- I print and it it's probably nothing sorry yeah, to nothing, interrupt yeah. you for you to do <laughs> get excited do. yeah um, <laughs> well, yeah we just print it in clear and I just basically take my trough and I trough out and, and it's like you can put a d- an implant anywhere in this zone but it can't come down yeah yeah <laughs> so it's like a real soup we're not talking this is not like this is not you know with it's a not co- guided surgery it's not a guided surgery it's a template this is a process in uh, surgical guide. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they love it. They yeah. absolutely love it. And you know, we've never had to deal with an implant coming out of the you know the facial side of a tooth. Like it's cool. always within yeah, the zone. Yeah, it's exactly that where you want it. Yeah, or close. This zone. <laughs> you, have, you have a zone this here. This is where you yeah. put it in, zone. right yeah. here. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, yeah. I think we're no, needing I, to wrap up. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Like, he came over and said, "Yeah, you, oh. you, you guys is back. Where you're back. Where to him?" So he said, "At four, you need to wrap." I think they want to practice. Okay. So oh. it's four. <laughs> Sorry. Esther, thank you for having sorry. me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank no, you let's so finish much. it properly. Yes. Yeah, I just thank you so you. much for coming on the podcast. And congratulations. I know we've, been, we've tried a thank few you. times. You're I love great. the fact that you're speaking and you're all women. I've seen you speak so a few good. times. Yes. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. I recommend anyone to check yeah. you out. Oh, thank you. Removable. Enjoy your weekend. You have thank a perspective you. that yep. technicians don't get. Oh, so. thank you so much. And yeah. have fun in Chicago. This thank you. Yeah, it's been a great show. Great show. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Hello, Voices from the Bench listeners. This is Janelle Tabakovic, and if you are going to LMT Lab Day West, you won't want to miss on my hands-on course. 
I am hosting a gingival composite course, bringing dentures to life with SR Mexico. I'll teach you how to take your analog and digital dentures to the next level. You'll learn my signature techniques of layering for natural gum tinting that will give you the confidence to provide not only an attractive appearance, but also a long lasting prosthesis. If you want to take your dentures to the next level, visit lmtmag.com or you can simply go to my Instagram page, JT Lab Queen, and just click the link in the bio. Don't be a square. Take your dentures to the next level. Sign up today. Oh my God. A big thanks to Chet and Esther for coming on our podcast. I've known Chet for like years and years and years, and he really cares about us, the labs. Like he's a super genuine guy. It's important for us to support the companies that support us back. And after talking with Chet and the others from Ivaclar, I feel the love. I really do. And I'm sincere about that. And I really look forward to seeing what innovations they come up with next. And it was great to finally meet Esther on the podcast. And our only regret is that we had to end it early because they needed the room for an event that evening. Who's up for a trip north to check out her workflow and drink some of her beer? Road trip. I want to go. I'm ready. Thank you, Esther, for not only doing what you do, but also spending so much of your time to share and to educate others. You are a rock star. Awesome, everybody. We'll see you at Lab Day West. Come say hi. And we'll also talk to you next week. See ya. Bye. Every day suck. Every day was an issue.